Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we are going to be solving one-step division inequalities. We will talk about division inequalities, look at what they are, talk about how to solve them, and as always, have lots of practice. So a division inequality looks like one of these inequalities on the board. Um, they have an inequality sign, so a le a greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to sign instead of an equation that would have the equal sign. They also have some kind of division. They are usually written in fraction form, like the black examples written in black on the board. Um, but they can be written in other ways, so I put the, the red and green examples up there as well. In our lesson, we're going to be working with ones that are written in fraction form. All this means is a divided by 4, just like this one is a number divided by 14. Let's take a look. x over 13 is less than 10. How would we solve this? First step is that we find our variable. The variable is the letter x. The variable will always be the letter. Then we ask ourselves what happened to that variable or what's connected to that variable. It's divided by 13. So we're going to do the opposite, which is called the inverse operation to both sides. So we're multiplying both sides times 13. And this is what it would look like. So x divided by 13 times 13 is less than 10 times 13. Multiply um, 10 times 13, that gives you 130. x divided by 13 times 13, um, 13 divided by 13 is 1, and 1 times x is just x. So we're left with x by itself on the left. Now, we have to check our work. So to check my work, I can plug in to the original inequality, x over 13 is less than 10, any number that is less than 130, and it will give me, um, it'll check whether the work is correct. Instead, what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to check using the number 13, um, 130. So I'm going to plug in the number 130 in there and see what happens. If I plug 130 into the original inequality, 130 divided by 13 is 10, and I get the statement 10 is less than 10. That statement's false. So 10 is not, or x is not equal to 130, it has to be less than 130. So let's do that. I'm going to pick a number that's less than 130. I'm going to pick the number 13, because that'll be easy. 13 divided by 13 is 1, and 1 is indeed less than 10. So I picked a number that was easily divisible by 13 to do my check, and it has proven that x values are less than 130. So that is the correct solution to this inequality. Let's solve another one. Um, this one, n divided by 2 is greater than or equal to 5. I'm going to follow the same steps. Where's my variable? n. What happened to it? Divided by 2. What's the inverse of that? Multiplying times 2. Let's multiply both sides of this inequality times 2. n is greater than or equal to 10. Again, let's go ahead and uh, try it with this one. If we plug in the value of 10, 10 divided by 2 is equal to 5. And in this case, that is true because 5 is greater than or equal to 5. So I can pick a value that is equal to 10 or greater than 10. Let's try one that's greater than 10. Let's pick the number 20. Again, I'm picking numbers that are easily divisible by 2. Just to make my life easy, 20 divided by 2 is 10. And 10 is indeed greater than or equal to 5. So the solution is correct, that n can be any number equal to 10 or greater than 10. Now it's time for some practice. Um, this is our inequality. a divided by 3 is less than or equal to 4. Pause the video. Try that one out. Did you do it? What did you get? Is this the first step that you did? Multiplying both sides times 3? My variable is a. a was divided by 3, so I'm going to multiply both sides times 3 and get that a is less than or equal to 12. If those are the steps you followed, you should have gotten that answer. Let's do some checking. 
I'm going to pick a number that's less than or equal to 12. I'm also going to pick a number that is easily divisible by 3. You don't have to do that. It just makes life easy. So I'm going to pick the number 6. 6 divided by 3 is 2, and 2 is less than or equal to 4. So that worked out. All right. Here's another practice question for you. Pause the video, do the question, and then come back and see what we get. Hey, welcome back. Hopefully you've solved that, and your first step should have been to multiply both sides of this inequality times 6. 7 times 6 is 42, so b is greater than 42. I can check my work using any number that's greater than 42, and I like to make my numbers easily divisible by 6. So I'm going to use the number 6,000. It is easily divisible by 6. 6,000 divided by 6 is 1,000, and it gives me a true statement at the end. 1,000 is greater than 7. So again, I've checked my work to make sure that it is correct. In this next section, we're going to work with negative numbers. n divided by negative 2. We're going to solve it using the same steps. Where's my variable? n. What happened to it? Divided by negative 2. What's the opposite of that? Multiplying times negative 2 to both sides. So I'm going to multiply both sides times negative 2, as you see here. When we do that, the times negative 2 divided by negative 2 on the left, they equal 1. So therefore, it is n by itself, 1n. And on the left, you have 4 times negative 2, which gives us negative 8. Now, there is one more step, and this is what makes working with negatives just a little bit different. If you multiply or divide by a negative, you have to switch the sign. So you have to switch the sign of the inequality. So instead of n is less than negative 8, it becomes n is greater than negative 8. Now, just to double check this rule and make sure that it's true, I'm going to do a check with both. I'm going to check with a number that is less than um, negative 8, and I'm also going to check with a number that is greater than negative 8, just to see what happens. So let's start off with checking using a number that's greater than negative 8. 100. 100 divided by negative 2 is less than 4. Negative 50 is less than 4. That's correct. Good. Now I'm going to try this one here. If we didn't switch the signs, what would I have done? n is less than negative, 18, negative 8. So I'll use a number that's less than negative 8, so negative 16. And I divide negative 16 divided by negative 2 would give me a positive 8, which is not less than 4. Right? 8 is greater than 4, so that answer is incorrect. So notice, if we had left the sign the same, we would get an incorrect response. If we make the sign changed, we get a correct response. So that's checking the rule, but it's also checking our work. So make sure that you remember that step of switching the sign if you're multiplying or dividing by a negative. Now it's time for some practice. Go ahead and solve this one. a divided by negative 6 is greater than negative 12. Hey, welcome back. Hopefully you've solved that one. What did you get? What was the answer? You didn't do it, did you? Go back, solve the question, and then come back for the answer. All right. With this question, we're going to find our variable. a, what happened to it? It was divided by negative 6. So I'm going to multiply times negative 6 on both sides of the inequality. Negative 6, a divided by negative 6 times negative 6, they cancel each other out, and you're left with a by itself on the left. Negative 12 times negative 6 gives me a positive 72. So a is greater than positive 72. Ah, wait, that's not right. I have to switch the signs. Because I multiplied times a negative, I have to remember to switch the sign. So it's actually a is less than 72. And let's check that work. I'm going to pick a number in this case that is really close to 72. I'm going to pick the number 71. Notice I'm not caring so much about the, it being easily divisible by 6. I'm just going to go ahead and try, try it out. So. 71 divided by negative 6 gives me negative 11.83. And because I substituted it into the original inequality, it is greater than negative 12. 
and that's correct. Negative 11.8 is greater than negative 12. So I've solved it and I know that that is correct. Let's do one more practice. Again, pause the video, try it out. P divided by negative one is less than 14. We multiply both sides times negative one in the solution to this. When you multiply both sides times negative one, it gives you that P is less than negative 14, but I need to switch the sign. P is greater than negative 14. Remember, that step is gonna be the one that gets you. When you multiply or divide by a negative, you need to change that sign. Let's check our work. We're going to use the number 10. 10 divided by negative one is negative 10. So negative 10 is less than 14. All right, good job. Now I'm going to use another um, sample here with the number negative 13. I know negative 13 is greater than negative 14. It's really close to negative 14 though. So I'm gonna try that one out and see what happens when I use a negative. A negative divided by a negative gives me a positive. So in the end it says, 13 is less than 14. That's also correct. All right, so I can check my answer using positives and negatives um, as long as they satisfy this statement that they are greater than negative 14. Couple of tips. Solve like regular equations. Make sure to watch out for those negatives. If you're multiplying or dividing by a negative, you change the sign. And then practice, practice, practice. I'm going to post some videos here that you can click on. Check them out. See if you like them. Make sure to like and share them with your friends. Hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.